What is up, my new event friends? Today, we're going to be talking about a tool called Tmux, which is a terminal multiplexer. I've seen a lot of comments where people are afraid or aren't sure where to get started with Tmux. And so in this video, I'm going to show you what my configuration is, how to customize it and make it look pretty sweet, and also layer in some plugins and then how you might use it in your workflow. I use this tool every day and I really love it. So I wanna show you how you can incorporate it into your workflow as well. So I said an interesting word, terminal multiplexer. And what exactly is that? So instead of using tabs or different windows to manage your work sessions, you can use all of that in one tool, which is Tmux. The building blocks of Tmux are sessions, windows, and panes. And using those tools, you can manage all of your different sessions in one place and using different keyboard shortcuts. That way you can quickly switch from one project to another or use get work trees to switch to fixing a hot fix or something else if you need to in the middle of your day and then quickly jump back into what you needed to. Some of the benefits in using Tmux and having one tool to manage all of that is increased productivity. So you can move quickly to different places, you can have separate and distinct sessions, and then you can resume your work after a machine restart. One of the worst things is having your machine restart and not knowing where you left off and if your files are up to date. With Tmux, you can actually make sure that this is always the case and automatically save that into the background. Tmux is also especially useful if you're SSHing into remote Linux boxes. So let's say that you use AWS at work and you need to run a long script on an EC2. Tmux is a really powerful tool to be able to do that, run the long running task and leave the EC2 running without interrupting what's going on. In addition to increased productivity, you'll have increased focus because you're not swapping to different windows or clicking and dragging different boxes around to focus on what you want to work on and the inevitable street cred, which everybody is after. Let's get started by installing Tmux. For me, I can type brew install Tmux and this will install on my Mac OS. If you're using Linux, then check out the GitHub page and go to this section right here. I will link this in the description for where you can install for your operating system. Once we have this installed, then we should be able to do Tmux V and see a version. For this video, I'm gonna be using 3.4 for all of my workflows and examples. Now that we have Tmux installed, let's go ahead and configure it using the tmux.com file. I went ahead and moved mine into a different file so that we weren't starting with a different scenario and you can see what it looks like from scratch. So we'll do a touch and under my home directory, we'll, we'll create a tmux.com file. And if we open this up, we can see that there's nothing inside and we can get started configuring. Let's start a new session using tmux new and then dash s and bob. So the name of the session will be bob. And if we hit enter, then you can see that the line on the bottom on the very far left shows that our session name is bob. And if we wanted to disconnect from this, we'll use what's called a prefix. The default prefix is control b. So if we hit control b and d, then we will disconnect. If we do a Tmux list sessions. So if we do Tmux list sessions, then we'll see that we have one session called Bob. If you don't mind the defaults in Tmux, then you can skip ahead to the workflow basics that I have later in the video. Otherwise, we're going to configure and customize our Tmux session so that it doesn't look so default. First off, let's update our prefix. So I personally enjoy using control A. I know other people use control space or some other prefix. And so if we open up our tmux file for configuration, which is our .tmux.conf, then we can add a new line in here and say unbind key control B, which is the default. And then we're going to do set dash G prefix control A. And then after that, we're going to bind bind key. Control A, send prefix. And from that, we should be able to use Control A as our prefix. Let's save this file and exit. And if we go back into our Tmux session, so I have an alias, uh, which is TA, which will do a Tmux and attach. And we can go back into our Bob session. Now that we're in Tmux, then we can source our Tmux configuration again. So if we do our old prefix, so Control B, 
and then colon, we'll see that we can enter a command right there at the bottom, and we'll have to do a source and our tmux config file. And if we hit enter there, then we should be able to do control A and D, and that will detach. Let's create another way to source our configuration file. So if we go back into our tmux conf, then we can go to the bottom here and we can add a new bind key and do bind R and source file and then our tmux configuration. And this should be able to display reloaded. And if we save this, what we'll do is whenever we use our prefix, we'll say prefix and R and this will refresh our tmux configuration instead of us needing to do that source command like we just did. Let's save this and let's go into our session. So again, I have an alias for a few of these. I will leave a link to my configuration in the description. And so if we want to go back into our Bob session and we'll have to do our other way of sourcing the file first before we can get the reload to work. So we'll do control A colon source and tmux.conf. This will then refresh and we'll have that bind key. So if we do a control A and R, we see that the bottom updates to reloaded and now we can use that to reload our configuration a lot faster. Another handy prefix to know is if you're in tmux and you do a control A and question mark, you can see all the different bind keys and shortcuts that you can use for different operations. That way you can be reminded of how to use these things and you don't have to just Google for them or not know how to use them. To get out of this, simply hit Q and you can exit out of it. Another way to exit out of your Tmux session is if you do a control D and this will exit that shell and you will be exited out of your Tmux session. Next, we're gonna update the window numbering. If you saw, we had a window that started with zero and that doesn't really work so well because the keyboard starts at one on the left-hand side and I prefer using one, two, three, four, five, six instead of starting with zero, which is on the far right-hand side. So let's open up our tmux.com file again, crack this open, go to the bottom, and we're gonna set a dash G base index, and it's gonna be one. Next, we're gonna do a set dash G and renumber our windows so that whenever uh, we close out one or we change the order of them, then they get updated. So if we save this, then we should be able to exit we can go back into a new session called Bob. And from here, we can do our reload. So we'll do a reload. We'll see on the bottom there that our window is now at one instead of zero. Next up, we're gonna install some plugins. And I have a set of plugins that I really enjoy, including some color schemes and a couple other session managers, as well as the ability to resurrect and save your progress. So to do that, we need to install what's called TPM or Tmux Plugin Manager. And we'll go ahead and do that inside of Tmux because we have a really nice way to reload our configuration now. As you can see from this website, this is the GitHub page for TPM and it has a full list of plugins on the Tmux plugins list. I'll leave a link to this in the description and the full installation instructions can be found on that GitHub page. From the command line, we will want to run this command, which is cloning our TPM plugin manager into a local directory on our machine. For me, this is under my home directory and then a .tmux. So if we do this, then this should work for you. Right now I have this directory existing already and it's not empty because I have other plugins, but for you, this should run and execute. Make sure that this works for you and we can get started into installing some plugins. Next up, we're gonna open up our tmux conf file and we will go in here and ignore this error that keeps popping up for me. And we'll paste in some config. We are gonna install a plugin for TPM. We're also gonna install this Tmux Sensible plugin, as well as make sure that the Tmux plugin manager runs at the very end of the file. So if you wanna add new plugins, you can add them here. If you wanna add new key bindings, you can add them in the middle, but make sure that this stays at the bottom of your file. So we'll save that. And then if we reload, so we'll do a control AR, which is our binding, and this is reloaded. Now, if we wanted to install those plugins, we'll do a control A and a capital I, and that should install both of those plugins for us. And we can see that TPM and Tmux Sensible are both installed, and we can hit escape to continue. All right, this is one of my favorite parts where we get to customize the look and feel or the colors of Tmux. 
For all those that have suffered through the default color scheme, now is your time to be able to change that. We are now gonna install the plugin. So if we crack open our Tmux conf, and if you have an error message, it looks like this, which talks about allowing pass through, then we can allow that to happen. So we'll set this GQ allow pass through. And this just makes sure that, you know, if you saw my previous video about image.invim or showing images inside of Obsidian, this is how you accomplish that. And so you can allow pass through so that your terminal emulator can actually pass through stuff to Tmux, which very good to have on generally. So if we want to install a new set of colors, we can do that, like I said, with a new color scheme. And we can install Grubbox, which is a pretty popular color scheme. We will save this. And then if we do a reload, so we'll make sure that our configuration is up to date. And then we'll do a capital I install and we'll install those different plugins. And we should see an update on the bottom there. And you can see that you have the classic orange and gray from the Grubbox plugin. I also recommend using the screen 256 color to get the most out of your color schemes. So if we do a set dash G uh, default terminal and screen 256 color, this is the config you want so that you get all of the colors into your terminal. Now let's incorporate one of my favorite plugins to allow us to be able to pick up where we left off after a machine restart. The two plugins that we'll need to install are Tmux Resurrect and Tmux Continuum. Both of them work in conjunction to facilitate restarting and being able to jump back into where you left off. Tmux Restart will persist the Tmux environment so that it picks up where you left off. And then Continuum will allow you to automatically save so that you don't have to manually save your session over and over and over to get that different persistence across system restarts. So let's crack open our Tmux conf again and we'll update another set of plugins. And here we will do a set. Actually, I have this on my paste buffer. Uh, so we'll install the two plugins, Tmux Resurrect and Tmux Continuum. And then we will set this Continuum Restore on. You can also set an interval. So if you want to have it persist using Continuum faster than every 15 minutes, which is the default, you can also add a config to do that. 15 minutes tends to work fine for me. So I will leave that as the default. Then we will make sure we reload our config, control A and I, and that will install the Tmux Resurrect and Continuum, and we'll be good to go here. There's a couple other nice tools that allow you to switch between sessions very, really quickly. Two that I'll recommend but won't go over in this video are the T Smart Tmux Session Manager and Sesh, both from Josh Modeski. And so check those out. I'll leave a link in the description. You can map your different keyboard shortcuts to like for me, I have command K to open up the little search window and be able to type and find things in Tmux. If you don't like to do the default searching, so if you do a control A and S, this will list all of your sessions and you can jump between them. You hit enter and you jump right back into it. If you want something nicer and get some Zoxide and fuzzy searching to be able to find those sessions, then check out those two different plugins. All right, if you skipped ahead and skipped all the configuration, then your Tmux may look a little differently than ours with a different color scheme, but you get the general idea. And I wanna start off by introducing what the building blocks of Tmux are. What we're presented with here is a window. And so we have many windows inside of a session. And then inside of a session, we can have multiple windows and each of those windows can have different panes. And so if we look at our different keyboard shortcuts, we can do this by doing a control A or our prefix and then a question mark. And we can see how do we split a window vertically and then do all kinds of different things where we can split and have multiple panes inside of a window. So if we do a control A and a percent, that will split vertically and we can go back and forth doing a control A and left or a control A and right. If we wanted to do a horizontal split, we can do control A and double quote and then like we did before, we can do control A and up, control A and left, control A and right to navigate between all these different panes. If we wanted to rename our session, we can do control A and colon and type rename session. And we didn't give it an argument, so we need to do that. So control A colon rename session and Bob one. And we can see that reflected in the bottom left where we renamed our session. If we wanted to have different keyboard shortcuts for how we split windows, then we can go into the Tmux config and we can add some configuration here. So I'm gonna do bind maybe a pipe 
to do the split window this way. And we can do split window with a hyphen window and then dash H. And then if we want to do the same thing for split window and horizontal, then we can do that with the hyphen. So if we save this and we do a reload, then we should see our config reloaded and we can do a control A and then the pipe to split vertically. Then we can do a control A and hyphen to split horizontally. If you want to close a pane, then you can go over to one of the panes and you can do prefix and X and that will kill the pane. You get this little prompt, which you can also configure to not prompt you and hit Y to kill it. If you want to go to the last active one, we can jump over to the right hand side and then we'll do a prefix and semicolon and that will jump us back to the last active pane. This is a nice way to jump back and forth between panes without needing to do the different arrow keys. One of the features that I use a lot is being able to zoom into a pane. So let's say that I have a NVIM session here going on the left and I want to be able to see it full screen. You can do prefix and Z and you can see this goes into a full screen mode. And if you go to the right hand side, you will pop back into this other Tmux. If you want to go between NeoVim and Tmux sessions, you will need a plugin, which I will link in the description of being able to jump between those different environments. So this is not something that you can always do out of the box. You will need another plugin inside of NeoVim. Now that we know a little bit about splitting windows and jumping between the panes, which are the elements within those windows, let's create a whole new window. For this, we can do a control A and C, which is again, our Tmux prefix. For the default that it'll be control B and C and you can see that we have two windows in the bottom if we wanted to go back to the first one then we can do a control A and one if we want to go to the second one we can do a control A and two as you can see this window has its own set of panes and if we went back to our original one then we can see that it has its own panes that are still here if we wanted to break a pane out into its own window then you can do a prefix and bang and that will give us a third window and that will just have the history of whatever that pane had. Let's consider a long running task and you want it to be its own window, split it out. This is a really easy way to be able to do that and allow it to continue running. Now that we have multiple windows and panes, this may seem like it can get a little overwhelming to be able to jump between things, but it's not. This is the nice thing about Tmux and we can use our prefix and S and be able to jump back into any of the panes quickly and resume whatever we were doing. Control A and S will let us list all those sessions and also the panes and windows inside of them. Tmux is an incredibly powerful tool and if you're doing long running tasks, like you wanna run a script on an EC2 instance or a Linux box, then this is where it really shines. You can SSH into that box, install Tmux, add your configuration if you want to, and then open a new session and run that and disconnect from the machine and let that task or that script run for a long period of time. Then whenever you're ready to check out the results, you can SSH back into the box and then attach to your Tmux session and see how it's going. This is one of the key features and works really, really well with being able to resume long running tasks. Another awesome feature is being able to schedule things. So if you wanted to schedule like pushing a commit out to later, then you can do a new session and do this command that you see on the screen. See whatever you know the repo is that you want to push out. And you can use the command line tool at, and you can say at now plus three hours. So this will push out a new git commit after three hours. I hope this has given you some great resources and being able to configure Tmux in a reasonable way so that you can incorporate it into your workflow. I personally use it every day and I love switching between different sessions using the sesh tool from Josh Mineski and I just can't get away from all the benefits uh, Tmux provides me. I'll leave a link to additional resources like a cheat sheet for Tmux in the description and if you have any comments or questions, definitely let me know and I will try to answer any questions on Tmux or anything in my workflow. Thank you again for watching and I appreciate everybody. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.